Look at this, folks. Look at what we've got put out for hard rubbish. It's a Victor two-stroke. I just can't leave it here, folks. I wonder if the catch is also here amongst this rubbish. Let's just have a quick look along the pile of rubbish put out. Yep, got the catcher. That's just fantastic. So let's go back and have a look at that Victor two-stroke closer. Looking at that, look at those scratches at the back. Actually looks like it's an alloy body one. Gonna have to take this home. Hi folks, and welcome back to the channel. As you just saw, I literally just picked this Victor two-stroke lawnmower and the catcher up off of the side of the road. Somebody had literally just put these out for hard rubbish. Now, looking at this a little bit closer, you can actually see that the pull start has broken. The pull start handle is missing and it does look a little bit older. So they obviously just thought, well, it's an old lawnmower, it's not worth fixing, we're gonna put it out for hard rubbish. Well, their loss is my gain, so we're gonna fix it up here today. So let's just have a closer look at the mower and catcher which we picked up. You can see it's actually a turbo disc model. Now what that is, that's actually got an extra plastic shroud that's put around the cutting disc, and that's to suck the grass up, allegedly. We'll have a look at that in a moment. You can see it's clearly an alloy body by where the paint's off there and the paint's off here it's got alloy showing through obviously you can see the pull starts missing coming around here you can see the spark plug boot's got a bit of a crack assuming we can get it running we can address that let's have a look at the primer cap i mean that looks fairly intact so it's probably good apart from the fact it's a little bit yellowed up here let's have a look See if it's actually even got any fuel in it. Oh, well it's got fuel in there. It's probably got, you know, I don't know if you can see, it's probably got two thirds of a tank of fuel in there. So probably what's happened is the cord's just broken in the last couple of weeks and they've just, you know, put it straight out. So let's just tip it on the side. Let's have a look underneath. Yeah, as expected, we've got that plastic shield which was the turbo shield and the whole purpose of that was to you know provide extra suction allegedly to get the grass up off the ground and into the catcher and she's a two-bladed model which i actually expected with the uh, turbo that's how they came out so let's have a look quick look at the catcher you can see the catcher there it's got the uh, magic eye you don't see that a lot on the what were the newer ones that was an indicator to show people when they Grass catcher was actually false, that's pretty cool. But what I can see it does have, it's got a bit of a crack here on the catcher. So look, it's not structural. I'm not sure if we can really address that. And at the end of the day, that's really cosmetic anyway. So let's start by actually giving it a clean. We'll hit the whole lawnmower with degreaser and then we'll give the whole lot a bit of a pressure clean. Well, I must say, folks, after that quick initial clean that you've just seen, I'm actually really impressed with how well the previous owners actually looked after this mower. Normally, you would find in around the carburetor and in under there, them completely full of munk, and I actually expected to have to take the tank off and clean that out. But I'll show you with the camera really how clean it is in there that, you know, it's really a testament, as I say, to those previous owners. And you can see just the whole quality, I mean, I suppose by the fact that they bought a white mower, they were really people that were pedantic and wanting to look after their things. But anyway, enough said, let's get into it and see if we can get it running. So those of you that have watched the channel before would know that I've got this old junk mower down the side of my fence here, and it's got a pretty good pull start and handle on it. So I'm just gonna pull that out, and that's got plenty of length there. So to be honest, I'm not even gonna bother taking this off. I'm just gonna cut it with that length because you really just need 80 centimetres and honestly, we've got over a metre with that. So let's go and fit that up to the Victor. So the first thing we're going to do is to remove the top cover and fuel tank. So we make sure the fuel tap is turned off. That's in the horizontal position. And then we remove the fuel line from the carburetor like that. And then we use our screwdriver to take that cover off. Oh wow, and look how clean that is under this motor here. You can see, as I said before, after that initial clean, the original owner of this Victor really has looked after this mower. So let's get that cord replaced now. 
and uh, see if she'll start. To start with, let's get this rubbishy old cord out. Oh, you can see it really did break close to the end point, didn't leave much cord there. So I'm just gonna melt down the end of that cord, the end that I cut, just with my heat gun. If you don't have a heat gun, you can just use a match. All I'm doing is melting it, just so that it doesn't fray, and then I'll grab it, grab it with my fingers and pinch it down. Just like that, so we can poke it through. And you can see that won't fray now. So to put a new cord onto your pull start, what you wanna do is to tie a knot in one end and have it open on the other end. Then you want to take your pull start and turn it clockwise around to the start position. And then what you're going to do is keep turning clockwise and count the revolutions. So we've got one, and you can feel the compression on that engine straight away, actually. Two, three, four, five, and you do five or six turns. I'm gonna do six turns. Oh, you can see that's right at the end. So let's hold that there. And then what we do is we thread the cord through the hole. You can see it's come through there straight away. And then push it through, through the mechanism. You can see I pull it there, and then I can push it up through the hole that it's meant to go and pull it through all the way. Then I can let go of the pull start and we can see that that's speeding all the way back in. So straight away we can see you've got our pull start and that's working really well. Perfect. So what we then want to do is to grab our handle and to feed the rope into the handle. Now, this is where something like a that screwdriver might be useful just to poke it through, help you get it through from one side to the other and feed it all the way through. As you can see, I've been able to get that through, not too difficult. And then what you want to do is just to tie that off with some sort of a double knot is good enough. Like that, and essentially we're good to go. So then let's put it all back together and see if our free Victor will start up. So with the pull start fixed, let's see if our free curbside Victor will start. So we turn the fuel tap on. Let's give it one, two, three primes. We'll push it all the way down and then back to the start position and we'll give it a pull. So I've given a few pulls and it didn't even give us a splutter. So let's go back to basics. Let's check that we've actually got spark going to the spark plug. I did comment before that boot is a little bit cracked, but I don't think that should affect it. So anyway, let's get the spark plug out right now. So let's pull that boot off. Just looking at that boot, that is really cracked. And I am actually wondering if that might not have even been making contact um, with that spark plug. So I've actually got some new boots why don't we throw a new boot on there at the same time? So let's pull that old boot all the way off. Just like that. And then we've got the new boot here. What I might do is just put a little bit of silicon spray in on the new boot surface, just so that we can lubricate that help, try to help it slide on a little bit better there. And we can see that straight away, all the way through. So then let's get that new boot firmly onto that spark plug. You can feel that, that has now actually clicked, clicked on. So let's try it again. Yes, I know I probably should have checked it for spark, but you know, let's just give it a pull and see what happens.
Yeah, should have packed in that pocket. Let's get that now and check stock. All right, so get that plug off there. Get that. Plug out. Now it's actually got a new plug in it, so somebody's actually been in here anyway, which is kind of interesting. All right, now I've actually got this neat little lead, which I made up, so I don't actually have to hold the base of the plug onto the engine. I can just use this lead to ground it. Then I can get a good view for you. So that the camera will pick it up, I've just moved the lawnmower over to a darker spot of the shed. And I'll give, the, give it a pull now, so we can check if it's got spark. All right, so you can see there it's got plenty of spark. I'll just pull that again. You can see that's just fantastic. So there's no issue there. Plenty of absolute spark. So as you just saw, it had plenty of spark. So we'll put the spark plug back in, hook that back up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little mini carburetor service. In fact, what I think I'll do is I'll put a brand new primer cap and needle in. I did notice that the primer bowl was leaking as I primed it. So we'll get that addressed, put a new primer cap, we'll clean the main jet in the carburetor, then we'll put it all back together and we'll try again. Get our test lead off and we'll pop that plug out for now. You can see it's a brand new plug that's in this mower. Just snug on the tightness there. Just check that that's all the way through and we'll get that boot on. So let's get this carburetor apart. Let's turn that fuel tap off first. Remove that fuel line from the fuel tank. Just put that out of the way. And then we undo this screw here. That's the actual main jet. So we'll give that a clean at the same time. And then just pull this out. Now this will have a float, so we wanna reuse that little float if we can. And it's got a what looks to be one of the little original yellow Victor needles. We're actually gonna replace that with one of our little special needles, but for the moment, let's just give the inside of that carburetor a decent spray out and through that sensor with carburetor cleaner. We'll give this main jet a bit of a spray as well with the carburetor cleaner. Just to really make sure that that's thoroughly clean. And then, as I said, got a brand new primer cap, a new O-ring, and this new metal needle to go in there. You see the metal needle there? That actually really seals and stops the mild flooding as well. So we'll get the O-ring onto the cap to start with, just like that. We pop the metal needle knee, make sure you put the needle if it's the original, doesn't matter, but make sure you put it in the correct way. So that's the conical end down. You just drop it in like that. And then you need to put the float on. So we're reusing the original float here. That should be fine. And then we make sure we just hold that float as we put that back onto the carburetor. I like that, it's a little bit tricky with it all the way in the up position, but managed to get that in there just fine. And we'll screw that jet in. As I said, that main jet is also the screw which holds the carburetor together. Quite a clever design by Victor back in the day and so simple. One of the reasons I love these Victor lawnmowers. Just like that, we are done. So I pop that fuel line back on and we'll see if we can give it a start. So we've got a new Spark plug boot on. We've done a little mini carburetor service, but the new primer cap, the needle, and given that main jet a bit of a clean out. So let's see if we'll start now. So I turn that fuel tap on. I'll give it, I don't know, three primes. Come across, I'll give it a full push down, back, and back. A little bit past that start position. I'll give it a pull. Go, folks. 
folks. First pull after we've done that little mini restoration on the carburetor and fixed that boot. Not bad for a free victor off the side of the road. So folks, I'm really happy with how this mole is starting to turn out. This free mole which we picked up off the side of the road. We've fixed the pull cord, had to replace that spark plug boot, and we've done a little mini carburetor service so far to get it running. And as you can see, it's running perfectly now. So what I'm thinking I'll do is just a few real cosmetic things. So I really like to paint those mufflers. So I'll paint that with heat proof silver paint. I'll see if we can do something about these handlebars. Not sure um, if we can do anything there just to get that, that little bit of surface rust off there and get that chrome looking good. And we'll also sharpen the blades. So to get to that muffler, let's get this tank off again. Make sure you switch that fuel tap off. And then, to be honest, you should be able to just swing that to one side. Don't even worry about taking the handle out and we'll get that muffler off. So we just get a long screwdriver and just really just flex that clip off like that. And then we should just be able to pull that muffler off like that. There'll be a bottom clip just to just wiggle off. a little bit stubborn so just get the screwdriver down there and give it a bit of persuasion get that muffler off like that the first thing that i like to do with these big demufflers i just hit them with a wire brush just to remove any of the light loose bits of surface rust and then i like to hit it with this rust prime converter and sealer because that just seals it all up and makes a really good surface for the heat paint to bond to so i'll just Pour that on liberally, and then we just brush that over the muffler. And it usually takes about half an hour, and it converts this to a really hard black surface. All that rust will be converted through the process. As you can see, I've just given it a liberal coating of that rust converter, and then I've just hung it up on this old wire rack. So just look at that muffler. Now that we've rust treated it, you can see, you know, that rust has really converted to a surface which will bond the paint. So now we'll hit it with the silver high heat manifold paint. Really happy with the way that muffler's now looking now that we've painted that silver. Now something that I did notice was when I started this lawnmower, it was really noisy. Now when you look on the inside of this muffler, you can actually see and feel that all of the steel wall that's inside that muffler has pretty much disintegrated and or uh, gone to the bottom. So what I'm gonna do now is just stuff some new steel wall into that muffler, just like this, just so that we can quieten it down a little bit when it's running. Let's reinstall our muffler. Uh, the bottom bracket can be a little bit fiddly, but essentially we just put the muffler back in and then we get it in that hole where it actually goes in the engine, give it a bit of a, a wobble, and then we need to get that bottom bracket on underneath that muffler. So with that bottom bracket on nicely, it's just a matter of getting the uh, top bracket on now, so just a matter of clicking that and then getting a screwdriver behind what I like to do and just giving that a flex. And you can see that's clipped in just nicely like that. So with the muffler back on, it's just a matter of popping that fuel tank back on. So with everything mechanical fixed up, let's give the blades a quick sharpener. So with everything mechanically addressed on the free curbside mower, let's see if we can clean it up a little bit more cosmetically. I found some old white paint in the paint cupboard, so we'll give that a go, and then we'll see what we can do about this surface rust on those chrome handlebars. So, just got a small little craft brush, and we're just gonna brush this onto the spots. Now the thing about white is it's actually never a perfect match anyway, so you can see this is pretty close, but the original paint has a little bit of dirtiness to it. 
So what I might do, I might just give that a smear just with the finger, just like that. Just to blend it in a little bit with the surrounding areas. And you can see that's made a world of difference straight away there. Which is the intent of what we're trying to achieve. We're not going for a concourse restoration, folks. We're just trying to neaten it up. So we'll continue and do the whole mile. So to remove the surface rust from the handlebars, the chrome handlebars there, what I'm going to do is use WD-40. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray that WD-40 onto those handlebars. You let it soak for about 10 minutes, and then I'm going to get into it with a scourer. So literally, I'm just going to give all of those chrome surfaces a good spraying with the WD-40. And on the other side as well. And then we're going to let it sit for 10 minutes and we'll come back. So it's been 10 minutes, actually a little bit over. So let's now give this a solid hit with the scourer and see how this comes up. So as you can see, I've given that a thorough rub with the scourer on those chrome surfaces. Now, unfortunately, I think for these chrome handles, that surface rust has actually penetrated all the way through the chrome and into the metal underneath. So I can see as I'm rubbing harder, I'm actually starting to take the chrome plating off. So the handles are definitely better than they were, but they're not perfect, but I think that's as far as I'm going to go with that. Now, the final thing that I normally like to do with my mowers is just to hit all the plastics a bit of tire shine. Now, on a recent TikTok which I posted, a couple of people commented that the tire shine won't last. And there are a number of different suggestions, one of them being WD-40. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to hit all of the plastics now with the WD-40. So having fixed up the mower, let's see if we can fix this crack, as you can see here, in the catcher. So to fix this crack, what I'm thinking we'll do is we'll just apply a fiberglass patch that comes out there, along there, and up the side a little bit, just to give it some extra strength. But before we apply that patch, what we'll do is we'll get the Dremel out with a rotary sanding attachment. We'll just clean and scuff up all of this plastic on the inside. So that was actually a little bit trickier than I thought, just to get the Dremel inside that catcher. And I actually had to use the extension attachment on the Dremel there. But as you saw, I managed to get it in there with that extension attachment, and that's actually scuffed it up really nicely. So the fiberglass resin will bond onto that plastic. So let's mix up some resin and get a piece of fiberglass cloth in there. So I've cut a couple of bits of fiberglass cloth to go into the corner of the catcher. We've got our resin and catalyst and a, a cup, a art school brush, and I'll use that to mix up the resin with the catalyst as well as to brush it on, because I'm just gonna throw that brush away. So whilst I was doing this, I've just decided to go with just the one piece of fiberglass cloth, just because this really is a thick, I'll just show you this one down here. It's actually quite thick, this fiberglass cloth, and I think that's plenty enough. So just going with the one to start with. So folks, it's been a few hours now, and that fiberglass resin has all dried. It's looking really nice on this side. So let's flip the catcher over, and we'll just have a look on top. So we can see that crack has sealed up nicely. It feels really strong. Got a bit of a excess has come out through that crack. So I might just get a, uh, a knife or the Dremel and we'll cut that off and smooth that out. Let's get the Dremel onto that. So 
So having given that a good sand with the Dremel, let's just spray that all down with some WD-40 and see how it cleans up. So if I do say so myself, I'm pretty impressed with how that's come up. Yep, yeah, it's not concourse, but good enough. So folks, having finished fixing up the Vixer, obviously it's time to do a test mate. So there you go folks, I've just finished cutting the grass at my place with this bit of lawnmower which I picked up for free off of the side of the road. And this is a genuine example of trash to treasure because this genuinely is a classic two-stroke lawnmower. Alloy body, and now I'm finished with it, starts first pull every time. If you've liked this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're interested in DIY maintenance on lawnmowers, around the house and on vehicles, on the channel we've got the Audi, Mercedes, Mazda and early Ford Falcon then don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But until next time, have a good evening.